Robin Jennifer Hallier. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, I'm going to start off right away saying I am not an artist. I don't claim to be an artist. I am as left brain as you can possibly get, so I can copy things very well. Uh, but I love the anatomy of life. So I'm going to give just a little short history of anatomy in art and uh, how we use it today um, for teaching our great health scholars. So you do see there's art everywhere, especially in anatomy. So here's the thinker. This is Rodin's thinker. So you can see the musculature that he did with, the scalp, uh, with his sculpting. See some of the ribs and a very pensive thought. But there's other types of sculptures. We have David. We have Venus de Milo. The discus thrower. And then in paintings, this is one of the Grecian um, paintings that was done by... Oh, I'm going to forget names. This is where I'm not the artist. <laughs> but you can see we've got art everywhere. Most of this art really comes from the Renaissance period. And Leonardo da Vinci is one of the very famous Renaissance men um, that we still idolize, I think. He was from a, a painter, a sculptor, a botanist. He actually designed um, bridges, everything that you can think of. But he's really well known for his Vitruvian man, Vitruvian man. And that's the one where he's standing outstretched in two different poses. And it's really to look at the different perspectives and portions. But he's also drawn a lot of other things. This is a show the musculature interacting with the skeleton, um, the brain, how he thought a baby would actually look inside a uterus. So we have all sorts of different types of drawings from Leonardo da Vinci. And what was really interesting is these are just from his notebook. And if anyone knows about his notebook, he wrote backwards. So you can still read it if you, you know, kind of get your mirror out there. But there's now an iPad app just for all of these drawings, and they have it translated. So you can easily get to it. And they do have ways that you can um, kind of rotate it. Because right now, what you're looking at is something very flat. He didn't just focus on human anatomy. He also has some horse anatomy and other uh, mammals. But after we have Leonardo da Vinci, we also have Michelangelo. And he also has a very long name, which I can't pronounce. But he was another Renaissance man. And he was an engineer, a poet and a very famous painter. We already saw his uh, sculpture of David, but another one is The Last Judgment. And this is a fresco painting that is on the Sistine Chapel altar wall. It took him about four years to draw this. But if you look closely, you can actually see some of the musculature that he um, puts into these uh, people. So we have another person from our Renaissance period, Andreas Vesalius, and he's actually considered the, the father of modern anatomy. So he was a Flemish anatomist, and he um, took cadavers and would actually put them up on ropes and pulleys, and when he would pull them up, and you could actually see how the, muscle, the muscles would change or the vascular would change based on the different positions, and that's how he drew them. His really famous book has been translated. It's called On the Structure of the Human Body. And I have a link um, for the National Library and Museum. They have his actual book that I'd like to show you. So this is the book that is at the National Library and Museum, um, National Museum, or Library of Medicine. And this is the frontispiece. The frontispiece shows the Sallis dissecting a cadaver in a crowded anatomical theater. Of all the figures, only he glances towards the reader as his right hand points to the body he is dissecting. The Four Day Fabrica, depictions of anatomical dissections show the anatomist at a distance from the cadaver 
while lower-ranking barbers and surgeons did the actual work of dissection. Here, the anatomist stands at the center of the scene, with dissecting instruments close at hand. So you can actually go through this book, and if you click on other parts, it kind of gives you some examples of some of the drawings. But, and a theater doing anatomy was really what they did at that time. And when you had a corpse, that's when you did your uh, dissection because you really didn't have a way to preserve them. So we can go back to, go back to the presentation, please. Mm -hmm. So this is the frontispiece that we just uh, saw. And this is one of the drawings of where he would pull, put the corpse with ropes and pulleys and pull them up and start doing the dissections. This is another picture that he drew that's pretty famous. And these are looking at the 12 cranial nerves on the underside of the brain. So as you can see, he really was our true modern um, anatomist. We have other anatomists and artists. We have Rembrandt. This is uh, another one of the um, anatomy lessons. This is done with uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Faust. And then Henry Gray, who is Gray's anatomy. And this spelling is with an A versus an E compared to the TV show. But you can see he was considered the, probably the first true medical illustrator. And Dr. Frank Matter was the one that I really pretty much grew up with and was trained on. He was an anatomist, also a, med uh, a medical illustrator, and his were all done in, in color. And what I really like about Dr. Netter's is because he was a physician, he would actually use tools. As you can see on the hand, he's pulling the dermis away so you can look from the underside of the dermis and how it intersects with the hand. So this again, we're looking at 2D. We really can't touch it, we can't feel it, but we can see how things are, but you can't really turn it around and see how a muscle truly interacts with a vessel or with a nerve. So a new piece is looking at body worlds. And body worlds, has anyone been to that? It's, an, it's a traveling exhibit throughout all the United States. Um, and what's really nice about the way that uh, Gunther von Hagen's put them is he put them in natural positions that we would, you know, just natural positions, you can see how the muscles change with that. And you can look at them, but you can't touch them. You can walk around sometimes, and you can see some of the depth as it was broken up in the first picture um, versus sitting. But some people find this um, not very attractive. I found it very attractive, personally. But we really can't touch it. And so that's where we found out about anatomy.